guys. Right, my computer apparently really struggles with that um, intro. Yep. I will definitely get that fixed at some point. <laughs> right. So, this week we are painting up a ball for our suzerain character painting stream. I have not been given much information about what this ball is going to be embodying, so... I don't know, we need to pick an element. Let me refocus. There we go. So last week I did... Not last week, the week before, I did lightning. So, we've already done fire. I'm not sure what other elements the Tempest take. I would assume all of them. We could go with a flaming ball. That could look quite good. I think we'll go with a flaming ball. Break out those reds. Again. <laughs> I think you're painting a lot of fire lately. Right. I think we'll start by painting him mostly brown. He would have still been... He's still a ball. He could be a Celestium-infused beastie. Interesting. And how would that look? How would a Celestium infused beastie look? Would we be going with more blues and whites, that kind of thing? Or gold? Maybe some yellows. <laughs> hey Mike! Grown to massive so sizes, even by boar standards, because Celestium is mega. <laughs> All the hugs and snugs. Don't get too distracted, Mike. you still got work to do. <laughs> All right. Either way, we'll start with some brown. Uh, so I'm going to use some rust brown because it's kind of reddish. It looks nice. And then we can work on adding in the other elements. Possibly literal elements. <laughs> we will see what the amazing zombie finds. Oh, we've got to give him, I think we'll have to give him like pinkish hooves as well because it'll look kind of cute. We've got to add a bit of cute. He is a pig. Gotta love the bacon. Celestium infused big cat. Ooh, okay. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, I see. That's fascinating. That is very interesting, although 
I do now kind of feel a little bit bad that I didn't get um, the circuit board stencil from Anarchy Models. Because that would have been perfect for applying that effect to him. Let me see if I can... Uh... I'm just going to close the windows because that's causing too much noise. Just to give me a second, guys. People on their noisy motorbikes. Yes, we could we could do that. We could add some interesting runic style symbols onto our ball. Oh, thank you, Mike. Thank you very much for the host. <laughs> Schemes. Yep. Scheming. All of the scheming. I did find some time today to do some digging around. Um, I will do a bit more digging tomorrow. And we will see what we have as options. Because um, Zombie was doing some digging too. <laughs> but I think if we go for the um, the sort of classic Scandinavian style I think that'll work I was looking into Celtic knots and I was thinking because of the way she's garmented I could put some Celtic knots on her clothes <gasps> I'd probably drive myself crazy <laughs> but I might design something to go on there that scheming I think we'll make the fur up here darker but we'll put we'll use a wash I think to make it darker so we'll go with the the rust brown well I was thinking I might have a look through the monster manual and see if I can find something that's definitely fantasy that I could make a Celtic knot out of. I mean, I know they have Celtic knots of dragons and, um, uh, oh gods, Kelpies and things like that. But I was, <laughs> I was thinking more like I could do a, a is it called a Remora's? Or something crazy like that. We can have a Celtic knot of something like that on her clothes. <laughs> they could be from uh, that could be their clan title or clan name the Remoras because we should definitely give them a clan I wish this pig wasn't already stuck to the base then I could get in at his belly a bit easier <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I intend to to browse through that and go, ooh, Celtic knots. Definitely works in my household because zombies half Welsh, so <laughs> there are 
plenty of Celtic knot ideas around. But yeah, we should definitely give them a clan. We'll see what I can find in terms of cool critters. But we should definitely give them a clan name. That, that would make some sense, I think. Glaze some pink in around his face. And possibly his tail. But yeah, Zombie found a bunch of other options as well. Um, like uh, Mongolian tribal clothing and things like that. But the the sculpting style is definitely Nordic. So I think if we stick with the Nordic, but actually like Mongolian frost giants would be amazing. <laughs> Mongolian frost giants. And terrifying, I imagine. I don't know. Have you ever heard Mongolian throat singing? There is a heavy metal band, a Mongolian heavy metal band called the Hu, H U, um, that use traditional Mongolian instruments and tr traditional Mongolian throat singing for their music. <laughs> great it's a really good sound I might have to find you a link to it Mike I think you might like it This would have been much quicker if I'd have just airbrushed this ball brown. But the airbrush is set up at the other side of the room. So we'll just slap the brown on. It's a nice brown though. I really like this rust brown. Hey MMK! <laughs> Just munching and lunching and watch paint dry, yes. The paint drying is the important bit. Especially if you're glazing. So, Zombie has suggested that I paint this up as a Celestium infused ball. It would give it a reason to be so gigantic. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, Miniatures Den. Thank you very much for that raid. <laughs> wow. Hey, guys. Hey, Emp. How you doing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> How was your stream? Scaring, scaring me with not that loud noises. <laughs> ah. Thank you so much, Miniature Sten. <laughs> Right, uh, for those of you that have just joined us, um, we are painting up a ball for Savage Mojo's Suzerain game. So the setting is Suzerain. It is. It uses the Savage Worlds rule system. 
and it is an extremely diverse setting. So you can find fantasy, cyberpunk. Thank you very much for the follow, Chip Chip Douglas. Chip Douglas. <laughs> nice. I might call you Chip. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Fabius Four. Yes, it is a very diverse setting. So we are painting up minis to represent some of the creatures and characters that you might find. Thank you for the follow, Mistress Tor Torturous. Hmm. Hmm. That is quite the name. So we have previously painted up some heroes. And I also converted and painted up. Uh, so this was um, originally Reaper Miniatures Rhino, giant rhino beetle, and I converted it to paint it up as a lava beetle. So I added all the spikes and I took the classic rhino horn off the front. So this thing has been infused with the element, the tempest element of fire, and it was possibly originally a rhino beetle, but has been inflated in size and turned into a monstrous lava filled, terrifying critter. Not something you want to encounter, <laughs> I'm sure. And this week we are painting up a celestium infused ball. Thank you for following Krenko. Krenko 601. So we're going to paint it up pretty much as a regular ball and then we're going to put a load of runic symbols on it. Mm. If you want to know anything else about the setting, you can ask MMK, as MMK is the author of Suzerain. Or you can also check out the website. <laughs> if you do exclamation Suzerain, it'll come up with all their links. Yes, we're going with a rust brown ball. And I think we'll go with, we'll try and go with glowing runes. They look a bit like circuit board patterns on the um, example I was shown. I don't have it on my computer, it was linked. Add a bit more in there. So what we'll, I think what we'll do as well is we'll make all the ridges down the back glow. So we'll get inside that. I need to get inside the air just to get rid of the black before I put in the pinks. Catch anywhere we might have missed as well. Um, for this base, or the plan for our project, <laughs> this guy will get some rival craft stuff um, and I'm hoping that I have enough I mean 
I'm pretty much just going to leave it like this. So I have some really bright green grass. So I have very short spring green wild grass that I can put underneath because that will really contrast with the brown and make him stand out. It'll also really help with the, um, the runes that I'm going to put on him. So you can have some nice bright green, uh, bright green grass tickling his tum. <laughs> but I imagine it's, it'll be quite short because he'll have eaten most of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you're stuffing your face. <laughs> We'll get some more brown on the tail there. But yes, we'll put some green um, green grass on his base. Yum and munch. That is almost as bad as, what, who was it? I can't remember the name of the mini company now. But they've got um, a couple of new sculpts in, which are a pair of bears. And they called them before and after. <laughs> I laughed a lot. <laughs> it, it was a good pun. I mean, it wasn't. It was terrible. I told them that those names were grisly. Because that's the mood I was in. <laughs> before and after. Uh, I can't even remember the name of the company. Yeah, exactly. Unbearable. Unbearable humour. Twitter's good for something sometimes. <laughs> there we go. I might need another coat of brown. Still got quite a lot of the... I don't know. Mm, no, we'll be okay. <laughs> um, it's occasionally good for humorous things. Somebody shared, um, I mean, a lot, a lot of ducks walking in the same direction and they'd put the Imperial March music to it. It would it would have only been funnier if it was geese, but it was a crazy number of ducks. So you know, makes me laugh sometimes. Otherwise, Twitter's just annoying. <laughs> but I don't have notifications on mine. I just occasionally check it. Uh, can't get in there very well. The only humour I find in Twitter is when I sign in and scroll and think, why do I still have this stupid platform? Then I laugh and close it. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that's how I feel about Facebook. That pretty much sums up Facebook to me. Hey Mechanicus, how you doing? Yes. Unfortunately, they're also owned by Facebook, so there's no escaping it. <laughs> Sorry. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to break your illusion. I'm so sorry. Pig. <laughs> Change the subject. Pig. I like to take the first word of that of the first dozen tweets I see each morning and turn them into a haiku. <laughs> Life ruined. <laughs> it's almost like the world's ended, hasn't it? Uh, I vaguely remember you said you, you were going down to London to train people. I think that was something you said. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yes. Yep. And when they took it over, you went, no! Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I put some pink in his ears. And we'll put some on the snout as well. Because even boars do not have much fur on their snout. Ah! Nice! Well, I hope you had a good time. that does sound rather nice to Kenya I'm gonna add some here as well because I think his it looks like that area is not gonna be massively covered in fur as well just place some pink in over the eyes, like so. So I'm keeping it fairly bright. I do have a lighter pink that I'll use for highlighting some of this. The Razar. <laughs> the Razar. That's a nice name. I like, I like saying that. Razar. <laughs> and hello. Pretty good, thank you. How are you? Get another coat of pink on the nose. We'll get some deep red in the mouth. <laughs> oh, little girl being a demon. Mm. Yep, I I can um, relate to that. I mean, I don't have a little girl. I have two little boys, and they are demons. And occasionally wolves. They're the lost boys. <laughs> Mike Disney knows what I'm talking about. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah. They've outgrown that demon stage. I'm sure that just comes with its own set of, its own new set of problems, as it were. <laughs> I hope your model's okay, Mistress Tortress. I'm just gonna call you Mistress. All right, we're painting the hooves in pink as well. We will go over them with tan. So that way we have a little bit of the pink showing through. Unfortunately it is. <laughs> Was it that bad? Fair enough. You um you go lurk. Lurky lurk hemp. I'm guessing it's um, possibly some work that you don't want to do. <laughs> ah, nice. Well, congratulations to your son. And congratulations to you for getting him out of the house. <laughs> At least for, you know, some some period of the year. It's the trog off from GW and I came up with the I with an idea. Uh but it's way out of my skill range. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that's, yeah, I get that. And you're never quite sure whether it's better or worse that when you finally do finish it and share it and everyone's like, oh, that's amazing. And you're like, no, no, it's not. I, <laughs> no, it's not. Stop it. Right, now any paint job is... <laughs> oh dear. How come any paint job is out of your skill range? Are you... Out of practice? Incapacitated. Well, you know, you could tell them, you could, you know, put it on a really big base or something. And if they ask you, just tell them it's a trasherama. Instead of a diorama, it's a trasherama. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll look good. I, I'm, I find that you're always more critical of your own work than other people are. So, I mean, at present, this guy looks terrible. He's got bright pink hooves for crying out loud. <laughs> bright, pink, bright pink nose and head. I mean, look at those hooves. He looks like he's got nail polish on. It's great. <laughs> I love painting minis like this. It's like, no, no, it's supposed to look like that, though. It's fine. Uh, Zombie is with us. Uh, he had to go AFK. So he is on lurk mode. Because it was Zombie that suggested that I paint this chap up as a Celestium boar. Celestium infused boar. Well, the baby is beating up a saw and sick mummy. So I gotta help that stitch. Uh, fair enough. Babies are 
very aggressive and violent, I found. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. An old boy would look good on the back of the board. Yes, probably. Uh, but we're not painting him up for Warhammer. But he's he's a Reaper mini. He's not available on the website yet, but he will be. And as he's bones, he won't be very expensive. So you could maybe get one when they're out. And then kit bash it. <laughs> Put an orc on him. But yeah, he was from Bones 4, I believe. The Bones 4 Kickstarter. So he does not appear to be on their website yet. I did look and was like, oh, never mind. I'm going to put some pink on his tail. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They have a bunch actually of boars. Uh, they just don't have this one yet. Because I was looking. But they have a couple of dire boars. Um. There you go. That's the search for boar. They have two dire boars with different sculpts that are possibly more suited for the orcs than these guys. Oh gosh, yes. Yes. <laughs> they are amazing value for money. I mean, the stuff from the Corsair ends up being about one, maybe two dollars. I mean, some of them are even less than a dollar a mini. They are crazy cheap from the Kickstarters. I have several miniatures that are enormous. I think we've got one called Mossbeard, who is absolutely massive. He was $18. But I think the most... Do I still have it up? Where, where was the... Because I've got uh, We Will Rock You, which was from the Kickstarter. How much was he? $15. $15 miniature from the Kickstarter Bones 4. I, I have to move my camera because he's just that big. This guy was $15. <laughs> I haven't finished him, but this guy was $15 and he is absolutely gigantic and I, I couldn't believe it when, you know that that's the kind of price they do for their bone stuff from their kickstarters I mean $15 for this is crazy crazy cheap yes big chicken but yes this is this is from the this is their we will rock you so this is their rock I was painting it up as a big blue bard. But yeah, I, I can't even get all of them in the camera. He's just that big. But I think the biggest mini they've done was... Like, I think it was Maldrakar. He was a steal too. He was just ridiculously cheap. But yeah, the We Will Rock You was crazy, crazy cheap. How much was Mal... Oh. Wait. Oh, I've got... Oh, $12 option was Black Tooth Terror, which is a T-Rex. <laughs> I have a T-Rex. But yeah, they were, they were so cheap. And the Bones 5 pledge, is, pledge Manager is still open. So if anybody wanted to get miniatures, dirt cheap. Bones 5 Pledge Manager. It's open till the 1st of December. And if you like and follow Mike Disney, you could also add yourself an extra overgourd and paint it up as a gift for the amazing Mike Disney, 
who did the concept art for the Overgord miniature. Because he's badass. <laughs> Uh, yes. Right. Let's start putting in some tan. So I'm going to use some dark tan. And we're going to start adding in a bit of texture on this guy. So we'll get out the smallest brush. And I'm going to add this in. So right here. All right. I'm going to have to add some matte plus to my paint to make it a little thicker and more opaque. So the paints I use are quite transparent a lot of the time, translucent, and they're all pre-thinned, they're airbrush ready paints. So we'll add a little bit of matte plus which will thicken it slightly so we should get a better result for the fur texture <laughs> I don't think Miniatures Den came in I think he did a raid and run We're going to add some texture in, so we're bringing the, the fur down the leg. Oh, thank you very much, Mistress, and thank you for coming in. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's okay. I, I do get it. I mean, I do that. I have to do that as well. I have little kids, so I often end up braiding people and then having to go and feed them. <laughs> Hey, Gallifier. But yeah, no, I don't blame him. Sometimes you've just got to raid and run. Just adding in some fur texture. Down the leg. So that rust brown is our base, and then we're going to add in, we're going to make him a bit lighter. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do, so we're going with a fairly brown ball, but we're going to put in the runic symbols on the, around the body, like on the cat. So I'm just going to keep putting in this fur texture. So he does have some fur texture sculpted on him, but it's really finely sculpted. So I'm adding to it with... I'm also going to head off. Uh, I have a book to finish writing. Oh, yes. As part of the run-up to the Suzerain Kickstarter. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, MMK. Ah, play suzerain. And if you want any of the other links for suzerain, um, 
exclamation Suzerain will bring up all the other links, including their Discord, if you want to find someone that will teach you the game. I'll give you an example. I'm going to refocus further up here. There we go, so you can see the fur texture. So we're making sure we overlap some of this as well. We don't want it to be perfect. He is a ball. And I don't think he's a particularly neatly trimmed. I'm not sure he's seen his stylist recently anyway. bring it back here so I handily have the sculpted fur to follow we'll add in another layer of color as well oh that's quite thick So let's have a look at adding in some so we're going to add a little bit of camo brown in so we're going to add that in the we just want the odd streak of that we want less of the camo brown than the dark tan but this will add a little extra texture so we'll see what we can get down here. So particularly focus on adding that into recesses as well. So I get more shading. We're going to add a little bit of pink in there. There are games every Wednesday for anyone to join on the Suzerain Discord. Nice. I think Mechanicus has been very, very much having fun and very busy. It sounds great. So we're going to add a little bit of pink in around some of these areas as well. Where this fur might not be quite so thick. So when doing fur, fur texture, I have been known to be a little lazy in the past and use a very ratty old brush. Um, and you can kind of get this effect. If it's splayed enough. So like this one. You might be able to get it with this one. Let me see if we can, let me see if we can do it. So the idea is... You don't want to take as much off as dry brushing. You've got to take a bit off. But you can then do like this. And you can sort of comb it on. Again, don't overload. You see what it's doing? It's not quite as trim as doing the strands individually, but it is faster. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yes, Dungeon Keeper. Yes, Dungeon Keeper. So we'll continue with this, this one. Oh, the shoulder here. And don't have it all going the same direction perfectly. You want to kind of like this. You do want some variation in it. Hey Nixon, how you doing? This is a good way of getting a lazy fur texture without having to use a 3-0 brush to paint every single hair. Because I am all about making painting as easy as possible. <laughs> Sensational. So take some more off there. See, we've over overdone it there. We'll get a nice dark wash on the his haunches his shoulders so what's so sensational or are you just sensational I mean you're pretty awesome so So it creates a fairly good fur texture. It's quite convincing. You need to make sure it's all um, played out. 21st anniversary. And you still have a job which you love. That's, yeah, that sounds pretty sensational to me. That sounds great. And congratulations. Did you do something nice? within the, the remit of how tricky things are at present, obviously. Mm. Kids are healthy and getting better each day. Is that because they're getting closer to leaving home? <laughs> That's how it works, right? We watch some TV together. Fair enough, we don't watch TV. Hey, you know, if that's what if that's what it counts, that's you know it doesn't really matter what it is, if you've enjoyed it and spent some time together, that's what matters, isn't it? See my the lazy fur texture works quite well. Like I say, it's not not quite as trim as doing each stroke but it does work fairly well if you want to do fur with speed you can go in with some we can go in with the three zero as well But yeah, it sounds like you had a fairly relaxed time, at least. Which is always nice. What did you watch? Was it at least enjoyable? Me 
need a bit more rust brown in there because that leg has escaped. Ooh, don't need that in there. Bear with me a second, guys, while I get in there. There we go. Watched Last Change You. Hmm. Oh, Last Chance. Uh, that makes more sense. <laughs> Fair enough. Add some fur textures to the head there. We might have to go in there with the three zero brush. Oh no, that's okay. Get in there. Netflix series about football. Ah. <laughs> bust them out so quickly <laughs> I've still got quite a way to go on this trap add some fur in now there I'm just going back in with my 3-0 brush to add in a little extra fur texture add some in down here There are certain tricks that you can do. I mean, they're not really tricks, but certain techniques you can use to create different textures with comparatively little work. I found. So it speeds things up quite a lot. So using a well splayed br um, brush, so like this one, if you make it really fluffy, having it like that is actually really good for doing fur texture. If you if you just load the tips like you were dry brushing, you want to dab a little bit off, but not too much. You don't want it quite as much as a dry brush, and then you can get the fur texture. And like I say, you can go in with a three zero or other small brush and just add in a little extra where you might not have caught it like under here we can add some that and practice yes you do speed up with with time Time and practice, the more you paint, the faster you get to a limit. Yeah. But you can also do a lot of, um, if you look over the models you've put a lot of work in or you might have tried something new on, you can kind of assess it to work out how you might improve for next time. It's another good way of also getting a bit faster because you might be able to miss a step out next time because you found that actually it wasn't really necessary that kind of thing, it is good to reflect on what you do. I 
The other thing is, um, it's also good to keep experimenting and trying new things. Because when you, it's, it seems a bit odd, but it actually helps you as well with um, refining techniques you already have. So we'll just add that in under there. So you see we've not caught under the ribs here. So it looks a little odd where he's got that the extra brush stroke. So we're going to go in there. Add that in. Just under the belly. Get a little bit more. It's almost like dry brushing. Right, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, matte plus to my camo brown. And we're going to add some of that in. We'll add sort of, I think we'll add in some patches of this one. Maybe like, um, add in a, a bit of a streak there. We'll match it on this side as well. So we're making sure we head that way. We'll paint down a little bit as well. So just adding in a slightly darker streak in there. Just gives him a little bit more interest. We can add in some... So I'm going to put out some pure oxide red. We're going to add a little streak of that around the edge of our dark streak. Hey, thank you. And welcome back. We've been lazily adding fur texture with a very sad looking brush. <laughs> A very sad looking brush. I'll just give that a mix. So this will help with the rust brown as well, adding some of the pure oxide red in. So just get that on there. It's a bit much. Give it a nice red streak underneath. I'll do the same on this side. So sad ratty old brushes that do that. Great for fur texture. <laughs> Great for fast foot texture. Hey! <laughs> ah, feeding some of the babies, yes. I fed my baby today. She was very happy. She did the very confused... I'd put the mouse in for her and then she slammed her face against the tank and sort of uh, against the glass at the front and was rubbing her face up and down like, where's my food? I think it's right there. Where's my food? Yep. <laughs> Dummy. 
She's a bit special. Just add a bit more red in here. Like that. 